Hi, I'm Brent Palmer with CRT Services. Welcome to our online training session. Today's topic is going to be on the FlowX, specifically using Flow Express to create reports within the FlowX. So I'm Brent Palmer. I'm the technical manager for CRT Services. I just want to welcome you today to our continuing education series. If you have any questions or if you have any topics that you'd like to talk about, please email us at uh, CRT Services and we will definitely try to get to that topic and uh, put it online as a video and host a live session for it. So thanks for the, all the input that we've received so far and we'll just continue on with, uh, with doing these, these online training sessions and we just appreciate the, uh, the great turnout that we've had for them. So with today's, we're gonna talk about uh, how we create reports within the flow. The reports can be configured any way that you would like them to be configured. They're independent of the historical archives and they're generated and stored within the FlowX. Each report has its own unique retention policies that can be set for it. The same way each report can have its own unique trigger and printer associated with it. You can generate reports without having to print them out. You can generate reports that are just stored. You can generate reports based on alarms, events, special conditions, periods, and the information on them is, is, can be just about anything that you can think of to put on a report. So what I'm gonna do is using Flow Express, we're gonna go into the report section of the Flow, X, of Flow Express. And in there, you'll see that I have a snapshot report brought up. So on the left-hand side is our list in the Liquids USC application of the standard reports that come with the FlowX. In this case, we have snapshot reports, meter reports, and you'll see that some of the reports are grayed out. That just means that they're disabled, uh, just as it indicates to the right of uh, the report name. The little circle that you see up top is called reoccurring. What that means is for each module that is inside the FlowX, a duplicate report will be made to handle that module's information. So if I have eight modules within a system, I'll have eight different snapshot reports that are created for each one of the modules. It doesn't mean that they trigger all off the same input. What it means is that the information that would be on for a snapshot for module one will be different than the module two information, flow rates, temperatures, pressures. But the FlowX knows, or Flow Express knows, that it needs to create another instance of that report to handle the information off module one and module two and module three. So I can create a single report template and I can just use one template for all of the modules that I have within uh, one flow computer just by simply right clicking on it and hitting reoccurring. So in this case, we've got a snapshot report and that's gonna be reoccurring. So up top, we have our uh, ability in configuration to also preview what the report will look like. In this case, this is what it will look like when it prints out. And I'll go ahead and back. And in the snapshot report again, I come over to my right and uh, we have a tab for properties. And in the properties, this is where we can select how this report is generated. So I have a command tag within the FlowX application that is a print snapshot. So we'll do print snapshot report and I'm gonna keep the, the data for the last 30 files or I can keep it for a number of days or a max file size uh, or a max size in, in our onboard storage. And then I'm gonna put a timestamp to it when it's created. Now, I don't have any printers configured in the FlowX. Real quickly, I'm gonna add a couple printers into this device and we'll add a text printer and this will be text printer, new printer one. And then we'll add another new printer and that will come up as printer two and we'll add printer three. So I've got three different printers and you can set the IP addresses or serial printers up in any location. So when I go back into that report now, you'll see that I have the possibility of generating copies at each one of the reports or at each one of the printers. If I don't wanna generate a copy of that report at that printer, I can just say zero for the number of copies and now the only uh, snapshot report will only print out to printer number three. And if I want two copies of it to print out, obviously I can hit the up down arrow to change the number of copies that print out locally. So if I'm doing driver tickets or something else, I can have two, three, four copies print out at the same time if I don't have a multi-part ticket. 
but we'll leave this at one. Meter tickets, you can see that I have, when I click on those, I have my options for printing. This time I'm keeping these, let's not do it for 100 files, let's keep, uh, we'll keep the meter tickets for uh, 365 days, so we'll keep them for a year. And you can see this command tag is coming off the print meter ticket flag. We also have reports by default that are printing out any of the uh, daily alarms or events that have happened within the FlowX. So again, some customized reports that you can make out. Our recalc reports come out. If I have station information, I can enable or disable the station. Now there's only one station, it's not recurring because uh, a module, an application, a grouping of FlowX modules together to create one FlowX still will only have one station in it. Right now we don't have the ability to do multiple stations within a FlowX. So on a station, right now I have that set up for up to four runs. So all of these reports, pretty much like the meter ticket, are standard coming in. The information on them can be changed. One of our recommendations is keep the template, the standard template that we have. And let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a copy of this by right clicking it, copy, and then I can click anywhere in here and click paste. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep that ticket, I'm gonna rename it as old for the meter ticket, because I know that that's a standard. And this is my new meter ticket. And I'm gonna change the name of that to meter ticket. So now when I modify this, I still have the original standard. I'm just going to disable it. And for my meter ticket now, I can go ahead and modify this if I want to. So there's text that are in certain columns along here. And then we have our header information that's up top. So with the meter ticket, you can go ahead and double click on a cell. And if I wanted to change this to uh, rent ticket, I can create rent ticket or I can create CRT ticket. And this is the header that will be at the top of the ticket. The information right now in column A is solely descriptive information. So it's, I know that I have the information in column B and column C for the, uh, the in this case, a meter ticket or the batch information. This is just a descriptor that goes on there. So if I wanted to add more information, I can add more lines in by simply either right clicking on a row and saying it's insert a row, or if I need to add another column in, I can right click on a column. You also see we can adjust all the column width. In the same way here, I can adjust the column height, or I can select a grouping of columns and select the column height and change that. You also have the ability to grab cells and you can copy them and paste them into a neater, uh, another ticket. So if I have another report that I want to copy some of that information to, I don't want to start off with just a blank report. I can create a ticket or a report um, with some existing information just by copying and pasting it. I can also open up two instances of Flow Express and I can copy a report from one Flow computer to another. Meaning that right now, if I open up Flow Express and I click on, I will open up Flow Express and I do another application, this is another instance of Flow Express that's opened up and I can open another application. And when I open that other application, I'll be able to copy and paste uh, the ticket into that. Just by simply, again, right clicking, it doesn't matter whether it's enabled or not, you can simply just copy and then paste that in. So going back to our meter ticket, we have information here. We can change the, tom, the, the font size, whether it's bolded, italicized, or whether it's underlined. We can center it into the cell or change the position of it. We can also wrap the words around if need be. So there's some Excel-like functions that are inside this. So as I go, keep on going down, you'll see I have my meter ticket, my location, my meter ID, and I just keep on going in. Again, if I need to add more rows in, I can add more rows for more information. So up top here in, uh, in rows three through six, my information is actually in column B. So I have a descriptor here of company, but to find the company, the information, we're a tag-based. So the FlowX is a tag-based system. So there is a tag in there that is called system underscore company, and it's on a sheet that's called company. And that tag is located on that sheet back in the program. So you can add 
information in and look for information tags down at the bottom. So if I was looking for company, I could just simply type in the word company. And if I look, I have the system company or I have the prover meter company that is, uh, if it's RW, that means it's uh, editable. Somebody is able to change that. If it has just the tag on there, that means it's, it's a value that you can put on. And again, this one is changeable too. So I have both the system company and I have a meter company. Well, in this case, I would want the system company. And all I have to do is if I want to put the system company twice, or if I wanted to put the meter company next to the system company in column C, I can simply grab that, drag it, and drop it. And now system LU run system company is in there. So when I look at the information that's on my reports, if I'm looking for information maybe to populate another report, and I know that information resides on one report, I can go simply look at the cell that has it in there. And here's a meter tag. This is my location. This is my meter ID. I have my batch numbers, batch IDs, and so forth. So easy way to find information and put it on. Again, we can search down at the bottom for specific tags, and you'll see that we can start filtering whether the tags, whether they're tags, whether they're parameters. So I can put what a parameter value may be on a report also, whether it's alarm or whether it's a command such as execute, uh, print snapshot, or something like that. Typically, you're not going to put the commands on a, a, a report, but you are going to put maybe an alarm status parameters or uh, some tag values. So if there's information we want to find, again, we can search here. We can also do a tree view and search through the application. And we do have some things that are broken down inside here. Or if I know that I want to grab, uh, let's say, the batch ID, and next to the batch ID, I want to have the prover uh, modules of elasticity, then I can simply copy this, come back up to my meter ticket, and let's say again next to the batch ID, I want to have that modules of elasticity, and it's a really bad example. Uh, typically, you wouldn't do that, but uh, you can put the information up here. So just by doing a copy and paste. So it makes it a little bit easier to organize and, and get information in. And where I can go ahead and I'm just going to cut that information out. Now, you'll see on the indicated volume, the gross volume, and the gross standard volume, I want to, I have two decimal places of resolution here. Now, depending on our truncating and rounding rules is where we will round, what decimal place we'll round out to, and that's set up in the configuration of the FlowX. But if I want to dis display the third decimal place, well, so let's say if I do take in the indicated, or I do take volume to three decimal places, but my report is defaulted at two, I simply need to click on which cells that I want and go up here in the right-hand corner and add another zero in, and that will take those out to the third decimal place. If I want my opening and closing totalizers to also have a decimal place, I can hit point zero, and that'll put a, a decimal place in there. So you can change the number of decimal places that are on your reports. It's not gonna change the rounding rules for the flow X in the way that it rounds volume and mass, but it does allow you to display more or less uh, decimal place resolutions on your uh, tickets. So it, you may have a CTL and you're like, well, I take my CTL to the fifth place. Well, simply by putting another zero in there on the report, the CTL will be taken out to the fifth, will be displayed on your report to the fifth place. We well, you're also able to do some conditioning. So what you'll see here is on a station report, we actually have conditioning. What this conditioning does in the formula, it's going to look for the, the which module, in this case, module one, and then it's going to get off the LU run sheet, the indicated volume batch total forward previous, and it's gonna put that information there. So if I'm building runs out, I can then say, well, go look at module four and grab that same information, or go look at the station, grab that information, add more rows in, and put all this information on a report. And again, the reports have their own retention. They're different than the historical data. They're retained within the flow computer for whatever we set up within the properties. One thing we do need to make sure of, so let's say that I create a new report and uh, we use the same report name for meter ticket, but let's say I create a brand new one that has a, a new name. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say new report and I'll call it, uh, CRT, 
and I can put a bunch of information, but I'm gonna say that the trigger for this is gonna be based upon a batch, and it's gonna be every time the batch archive trigger goes off, or let's just say the batch trigger goes off, it's gonna be reoccurring. So now when I do it, I can do it by uh, each module can have its own report. But what I need to do also is I need to make sure that I have a display set up for these reports. Because just because I make a report doesn't mean that I actually would have a display for it. So to create the display for the report I just created, I'm gonna go over to displays. And you'll see we have a section for reports. And you can put them under any setting that you want, but I'm gonna put it under the run. And you see that we have some reports already uh, displayed up in this one there's also some conditionings on when to show it whether uh, whether we want to show it when we're rounding not rounding but I'm going to keep it simplistic and I'm either going to right click or come up top here but I'll right click and I'll say new report display so the display will be CRT reports and I'll come up here and I, again I can put in a condition on there that says only when somebody logs in or the report has to be enabled or, or something else we can create some conditions on there but the report I need to select then is I need to make sure that I select that new CRT report because that's the display I want I'll go ahead and save this and then I will compile the the application and I'll write it to the device and then when I go to the displays that report would be there so you can also test out your reports by going into the debug offline. So when I go to debug offline, it turns my laptop into a virtual flow computer. And I'm going to give it a few seconds here to go ahead and get it in that, uh, in that mode. And uh, the video may freeze for a second. All right, so now we're in the debug offline mode. I've turned my laptop into a virtual flow computer. I'm able to do one is to go up here and actually generate these reports, any reports I may have to have in my system. So if I want to generate a meter ticket, I can simply hit generate. So instead of having the batch end, when I hit generate, I can go into reports, run, and when I go into meter tickets, it was generated. The same way if I want to do a snapshot, I can simply hit generate. And when I go back up, and go into snapshot reports, it will have generated a snapshot report. So it's a way for me to view my reports also. Make sure that my templates look good. So when I click on the report, it will download it here in a few seconds. And when it comes up, it will display the report. I can save it as a text file, open it up as a text file, and then I have my report with my information on there. So just a handy way to check and see if you like the reports before you ever write them up to the flow computer. When I'm done, I exit off debug offline, and this will bring me back to the normal operations of my, uh, my, my system. So that is reports. And if we have any questions, please don't hesitate to get a hold of us at CRT, send us an email, give us a call. If you'd like to go over reports in more detail, let us know. We can set up a one-on-one -on -one session to go over and how to create specific reports or go over modifying reports. And if you would like to go into more detail with reports in a, uh, another virtual session online like this, let us know and we'll have a second report uh, topic and event. Just wanna thank you for tuning in to us today. Please uh, check out our other videos at CRT-Services on our YouTube channel, or you can view us online at CRT.Services, and we hope that you have a good day.